Hi everyone, welcome to episode 4. So our goal today is to create some color maps from the noise we've been generating. Okay, so we're going to need a way to assign colors to specific height values. So let's go into the map generator script and let's create a public struct for our different terrain types. And this can contain a public float for the height value of this type of terrain as well as the color that this terrain will have, so just call that color. And then maybe we can also add a public string, just so that we can label the type of terrain as being water, grass, rock, whatever. So I'll just call that name. And then we'll want to make sure that this is system.serializable, so that it will show up in the inspector. And then over here we can just create a public array of these terrain types. I'll call this maybe the regions. So if we save now and go onto the Map Generator Inspector, I'm just going to create two regions to start with. I'll call the first one Water and the second one Land. I'll give this a blue color and maybe this one a nice green. Then I'll give Water a height value of 0.4 and land a height value of 1. So this will mean that from 0 to 0.4 will be the water region, and then from 0.4 all the way up to 1 will be land. So let's go into the map generator again and implement this. So we'll want to loop through this noise map that we receive. So we'll say 4 int y equals naught, y less than map height, y plus plus, and then for int x equals naught, x less than map width. We can now say that the height at this point, so float current height, is equal to the value of our noise map at coordinates x by y. All right, we'll then want to loop through all of the regions so that we can find which region this current height falls within. So we'll say for int i equals zero, i less than regions.length, i++. Plus plus. If the current height is less than or equal to the region's height, so regions i dot height, that means that we've found the region that it falls within, so we can break. Since we don't need to check the other regions, we can just move on to the next coordinate. But uh, before we break, of course, we want to save the color for this point. So just like how in the map display class, we're generating a one-dimensional color map from our two-dimensional noise map, we'll want to do the same thing here. We'll create a, uh, a 1D color map, set this equal to a new array of colors with a size of map width multiplied by map height, and then Again, like in the map display, we'll say color map with an index of y multiplied by the map width plus x is equal to the current region dot color. All right, so now we should have all of our colors saved in this array, and uh, we just need to get those displayed onto the screen. Now, we'd still like to be able to draw our noise map if we want, so we don't want to overwrite that code. Let's instead create a enum, just at the top here, public enum draw mode. So this will determine which thing we're going to draw. So at the moment, we've got two different things we might want to see. Either we want to see the noise map, or we want to see the color map. Okay, so we can say public draw mode draw mode. And then down here, when we say draw noise map, we'll say if the draw mode is equal to draw mode dot noise map, then we draw the noise map. Otherwise, if it's equal to draw mode dot color map, we'll of course be drawing the color map instead. Before we do this though, I'd quite like to separate this texture creation code from the map display class. So I'm going to create a new script 
called the texture generator. Let's open this up. So this is going to be another static class, so it won't extend from on a behavior. So this is going to have a method to create a texture out of a one-dimensional color map. So let's create public static method returning a texture 2D. We'll call this texture from color map. And it will take in as an argument the color array for the color map, as well as the width and the height of the map. We can then say texture 2D texture is equal to a new texture 2D with a size of width by height. We can then say texture dot set pixels, pass in the color map, then apply all of that, and then finally return the texture. We can then have another method for getting a texture based on a 2D height map. So let's say a public static texture 2D, call this texture from height map, and this just needs the 2D array of floats making up the height map. All right, so in here we're going to basically copy all of this code that we had previously in the draw noise map method. So let's cut that out and let's paste it in here instead. I've just changed the name from noise map to height map, so let's just replace all of those. And now since the result of this is a 1D color map, we don't have to actually create the texture here. We can rather just return the result of the texture from color map method when we pass in the color map that we've just created. Oh, and I just forgot that we need to pass in the width and the height to this texture from color map method as well. Okay, so things are just a little bit neater now. Uh, let's head over to the map display class. So instead of this being a draw noise map method, this is just going to become a general draw texture method for drawing a texture to the screen. So it will take in a texture 2D called texture, and then we can get the width and the height of that texture just by saying texture.width and texture.height. So let's save that, and we'll have to change this in the map generator as well. So instead of display.drawNoiseMap, we have display.drawTexture. And instead of passing in the noise map, we pass in map, and we pass our noise map into there. All right, if we then want to draw the color map, then we can do the same thing, except we instead say texture from color map, and we pass in the color map we generated earlier, along with the map width and the map height. Okay, so let's head into Unity to check this out. So our draw mode is currently set to noise map. Let's just quickly hit generate to see that that's still working, and it is. So then we can change our mode to color map. So this is nice, we've got our water and our land regions being drawn. Um, they're being drawn quite blurrily, however. I'd quite like to just make these uh, sort of more crisply defined. And another thing you might notice is that uh, since the wrap mode of this texture is by default set to repeat, uh, we can see a tiny bit of the other side of the map uh, over here. So let's go into our texture generator. And let's first of all fix the blurriness by saying texture dot filter mode is equal to filter mode dot point instead of bilinear. And then we can fix the wrapping by saying texture dot wrap mode is equal to texture wrap mode dot clamp. Okay, so if we save and regenerate this, we will now see that it's nicely defined in crisp blocks and we can no longer see the other side of the map sort of uh, seeping through here. I'm just going to fast forward the video as I play around with the regions.
Okay, so this is looking quite nice, I think. Uh, one giant problem with this region system, though, is that if, for example, I wanted to add in a new region right in the middle here, say a second variant of sand, then uh, I'd basically have to manually shift all of these one down, which is a gigantic effort. So what we're going to do later on is create a custom editor to make the handling of regions much easier. Anyway, that is everything for this episode, so until next time, cheers!